Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, and today I am going to get busy replanting for the cool season. You can see I have harvested all the peanuts from the feed tank bed, and now I'm gonna to head to one of my favorite local nurseries, Campbell Road, to pick out some beautiful vegetables and flowers that will thrive through the winter. So come along with me, let's see what we can get. Here we are at Campbell Road. They grow such wonderful plants. Tons of pansies. I prefer violas. Those are the smaller flower because they hold up better and actually bloom all winter. So you can see these are all pansies here. The violas are these. Much smaller flowering. But they're so reliable and I couldn't help but indulge in some snapdragons and my favorite, Ms. America, which is a Mizuna mustard hybrid, but I'll definitely be coming back to get some more of these leafy greens. They look so good. Campbell Road is retail and wholesale, so you can shop here regardless of whether you're a landscaper with a wholesale ID or not. And they just have, I think they're the best annual grower in the Raleigh area. It's always such a treat to come here and go plant shopping. I'm back from my shopping adventure. I got great plants from Campbell Road, as always. And I did get some bags of hardwood mulch from Lowe's. It's not the usual mulch that I use, but I think it'll suffice just to help prevent the cats from digging so much. The cats really like bare soil and, you know, they, I, I don't even know that they're always using it as a litter box. Sometimes they're just digging for the sake of digging. But the first step before I do anything is to actually go ahead and fertilize. And I found this bag of garden tone that animals have also found. And I am basically gonna top dress the two empty beds with this. Then I'm gonna mulch on top of it and then I'm gonna plant. And it's really good to do it in that order because it makes the process significantly easier, more efficient. You don't have to do all that tedious work of trying to mulch in between small plants. So just trying to get you to work smart, not hard. And I can't wait to see how these beds are gonna look. I'm even starting to get motivated to think about tearing out all of those sweet potatoes this afternoon because now that I am in the, the idea of getting some cool season beds planted, I'm, I'm actually getting pretty excited about it. Embrace the season. killing me to tear out those coleus. I know I need to do it. I just have to rip off the band-aid. Transitioning from summer to fall is not easy for me. <laughs> Here I am proving it. Mmm. I need some encouragement. Tell me. Rip it out, Bree. They're gonna die as soon as it gets cold. It's the logical thing to do. I know it is. I just love summer so much. All right, this year I'm pretty heavy on the snapdragons. Hopefully I won't regret that. I mean, most years they actually grow all winter. There are still, I think, lots of bulbs from years past in here. Um, so I'm not gonna add any more bulbs this year because I forget what colors I have already in here. But I like this combo of the Ms. America mustard and then the two colors of Snapdragons and the pale white viola. Of course, I'm gonna plant garlic along these edges it really killed me to take out those coleus. I'm not gonna lie, like, it hurt. 
I know it's the right decision because it has to get done, but mm. And I'm gonna try and put those glass pieces on shorter poles because they're out of scale for planting this short, but they would look really good on smaller poles. So hopefully I have some that would look appropriate and then I can add those back in. So now I'm gonna get busy digging some holes. a few really important final steps before I can consider this bed to be finished. Now that is excluding the fact that the bed edges are super wonky and not straight. That's going to be a project for a different day. But uh, if you're wondering if this is animal proof, the answer is always no. And it's not just because I grow food. Um, it's also because there's lots of ornamental plants that things like deer and groundhogs and rabbits love to eat. So my first line of defense for the animals is planting an edge of garlic. And this is a sack of garlic that I grew last year. I usually grow around 800 individual cloves. I plant 800 individual cloves, which ultimately turn out to be 800 bulbs. And now what I can do is just divide these into cloves again and thumb them into the edge. That's exactly what I'm going to do for my long term animal deterring strategy. But in the meantime, it's going to take a little while for this garlic to grow. I have both my I Must Garden deer repellent and my I Must Garden rabbit repellent. And I'm going to spray everything with both of these separately because they actually have different ingredients in them that will make them deter both deer and rabbits, which are my two biggest problems. Um, I know if I was a deer, I would 100% come in here tonight. I would take a dip in the pool because the water temperature is perfect. And then I would eat all of these beautiful annuals that I just brought home from a, from a greenhouse where they've been growing without any sort of animal pressure at all. So it's really important that you just think logically about this because First of all, you're not the only person that has animals that walk through your yard. And you know, it, it, just think about it. If you buy brand new plants, they've been pumped full of fertilizer, they're flowering. Why wouldn't an animal eat it? Of course they're gonna nibble on it. Even if it's a plant they don't like, they're gonna try it. It's brand new, right? So it's up to you as the gardener to actually make it so that they leave your plants alone. And, I mean, I give a lot of talks on animal brows and overwhelmingly people don't actually do anything. They just like to complain about the animals and that's fine. But you know, you really can't complain but so much if you're not actually gonna take action. So I'm gonna take action because I don't wanna waste the money that I just spent in making this bed. I think it looks really pretty. I think it could look great for the next six months provided I do my job and prevent the animals from eating it. And so that's why I'm going to plant garlic and I'm going to spray repellents. Now for anyone who wants to keep track, there's about a hundred cloves of garlic planted just in this bed. Those cloves will ultimately grow out to be an entire bulb. So from this one little area, all because I'm trying to deter animals, I can supply myself with a really substantial amount of garlic that I use in my kitchen. If you've ever been in one of my presentations, you know that I often use garlic as my example to really drive home the foodscaping idea. If you just grow one thing for yourself that you don't have to buy from the grocery store, that will actually help combat the food miles crisis. And in the case of garlic, 90% that is sold in American grocery stores is shipped all the way from China. Every sunny landscape in this country can be utilized to grow garlic as a cool season crop that simultaneously deters animals. So why wouldn't you grow it? It's so practical. It doesn't need to be irrigated. It doesn't need to be fertilized. And you will ultimately have a really delicious harvest. Trust me, 
Homegrown garlic tastes so much better than what you buy at the store. Now, my final two steps. I'm going to water everything in, and then I'm going to spray my I Must Garden repellent. And then I'm going to call this bed completed for the fall season. And unless we get really cold, which fingers crossed we won't, this bed actually should look really good until like mid-May. So even though all of these are annuals, I still get half a year's worth of enjoyment from them. And to me, I think it's worth it. I love being able to do a complete bed change out and reinvent the space entirely. And that's precisely what growing annuals allows me to do. So I hope you'll be inspired to take some of the tips from this video today and apply them to your home garden. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video if you found it to be helpful. And I look forward to sharing updates with you from this bed each week in my weekly garden tours.